Well, now on to the open sea beckons as the modern brigantine Asgard II provides an exhilarating taste of life under sail. The west coast of Ireland, south of Galway Bay, where the sea meets the cliffs of Moher, and where, for more years now than anyone can remember, tough little boats like these, the Galway hookers, have sailed the seas between the mainland and the Aran Islands. Today, it's a sea shared, as it was so often long ago, with a bigger sailing ship. This, the Asgard II, a proud brigantine, but for all her looks, launched only in 1981. Designed by Jack Tyrrell, an Irish boat builder of tradition and style, patterned on the past, a sail training vessel, giving the young people of Ireland a taste of an essential part of their heritage. And nothing could have been more fitting than that upon her return from a cruise, the Asgard should have been escorted by little boats as Irish as these. They're sporting boats now, the hookers, but once the whole economy of this part of Ireland depended on them. They were working boats with working tar-blacked hulls, and they carried cargoes of limestone, seaweed and peat. They came across remembered waters to sustain a local land. The lovely land around the city of Galway, celebrating, as Asgard sailed in, the 500th anniversary of the granting of its charter. I was allured by Galway, someone wrote centuries ago, and who could blame him? For Asgard, though, it's an anniversary port to welcome aboard a new crew of trainees. Your bunk number 17. Okay. Asgard's master is Captain Eric Healy, whose job, or rather whose vocation it is, to give young people the taste that he has savoured, a love of the sea. His mate, Barry Martin, and beguiling though the Irish accents may be, there'll be an edge to them before the voyage ends. Okay, lads, will you step aboard? Uh, Michael, you're in berth two, and Paul, Paul, isn't it? Porrick strap, sorry, Porrick, you're in berth 13. Would you come this way, please? Make your way down through the deck house and go right forward in the ship. You'll find your berths, okay? Barry Martin briefs the trainees about routine under sail. Uh, Boson, it's Liam Keating. He'll be the man you will uh, hear the most from. <laughs> And Steve, our engineer, is floating around there. You'll meet him, too, when, he, when we do the um, walkabout. The other person uh, is Thelma, our cook, and every one of you will be working with her at some stage. The ship's company is divided into three watches. We have port, middle, and starboard watch. We have three watch leaders. Port watch, Valerie Knight. Hand up, Valerie. Yeah. Middle watch, Jeanette Knight and starboard watch. The program for the week is mapped out by Captain Healy. The plan is we go out nine o'clock, we'll have a good day at sea. Uh, we hope we may see some uh, uh, traditional boat sailing in the hookers. Uh, the hookers are having a race, so the plan is to go and have a look at them sometime in the afternoon, and then uh, go to, I think it is going to be Kilrone with the southerly wind, but if the wind goes round to the east, we will have to go into Rosseville. Uh, we also, weather permitting, will aim to have one night at sea, just to show you that uh, ships do not tie up at night all the time. We keep going right around the clock. But first, and rightly so, there's safety, with the drill taken by the boatswain, Liam Keating. In the life raft you've got, uh, a repair kit, a first aid kit. Uh, the first aid kit uh, is kind of just ba basic small plastic plasters, 
bandages right. or broken limbs, any kind of stuff like that. Essential repairs. There's not kind of a whole uh, surgery I've put in it. If you have to get in the water and then get into them from the water, they are pretty difficult to get into. In fact, I, I w did a survival course down in um, Cork, and with my pot and that life jacket, I found it very... You can from it in, in kind of bad weather. The crew, divided into sea watches, learn how to sail the ship and tentatively how to go aloft. Right, put your right hand on the box. That's it. I know. Up. That's it. Now keep coming up to the very top of the rattle. That's it. Don't hold on to the timber. That's it. Now come back and put your two feet here. Now hold on there a second. Right. I don't overstep. That's twice I've told you. Right. This foot down first. Down. Down. Two feet down together now. Keep coming. That's it. Keep up right to the top. You go up one side of the foremast and down the other, and the deck below looks farther than it is. But however far, it's far enough. And a safety harness out on the yard arms is more a sign of prudence than of fear. I'm going up. Oh, yes. Yeah. Another, another step up. Now, back in the hands, first of all, are too high. Come on, step up a second. Infinity, or so it seems above, and when you reach it, infinity below. But this has to be learned because within 24 hours, you could be doing it in a surging sea. Come on, you're, you're starting to close in on the rigging again. Back off the rigging, give your knees room to come straight up. Right, keep you coming right down and put your two feet between the two things, to the two bottle screws. And it, it's the exact opposite way you came up. Everything's, the steps are, no, two feet between the two bottle screws. Now, your right, you're leaving, going down with your right foot all the time. But if you lean out, you'll see the steps. Your right foot. You might get the order harder port or harder star, but if you get that, you've got to put the wheel over 40 degrees, whichever way it is, okay? And when you're going harder port or harder star, but you can use what's called the lazy stroke, but watch your chin. You'll see why, you have a go. <laughs> Okay, no, no, oh, wait till you get the order. Okay? All right, hard to port. Hard to port. Watch your chin, see what I mean? <laughs> now, what do you do now? Hard to port, okay? Right, midships? Midships. Okay? All happy about that? Will you check the ovens are on as well? The trainees take a turn at everything, especially in the galley with Thelma Jones, the ship's cook. They tap the door to the furnace there to make sure all the seeds are gone. And they're into slices, blend widthwise. And then add the green ones and the mushrooms. That's gone as well. Up on deck, there's polishing, as the Asgard immaculately prepares for sea. Life aboard the Asgard, as it is on any sail training vessel, is disciplined and demanding. And any trainee who may have thought that a holiday cruise was in prospect is quickly disabused. The Asgard, for all her comparative youth, is a brigantine and she sailed as she would have sailed in the truest of her times.
Clear of the harbour, the trainees, whether they feel ready or not, are the Asgard's crew. And young as they are, they embrace the aids that their forebears didn't have with a certain ease. Aerial forecast for the next 24 hours. Viking warboats here, variable, mainly southwesterly, three or less, extensive fog. South Utsira, Fortis, Cromarty, Forth, Time, Dogger, Fisher, German Bike, variable three or less, fair. But the trainees are never allowed to forget that the sea is old and unpredictable and the weather is fickle, especially off the Irish coast. Now rising, and that's the shipping forecast. <laughs> Captain Healy knows it well and is never far away. Unfortunately, we can't take a direct line to Slyne Head as we would like to do. When he's not sailing, Barry O'Donovan is a chemical engineer in Dublin, but he's a qualified yacht master too. Jeanette Knight from Tipperary spends her watch learning navigation. Trying to keep to 240, but because David Brannigan is from Mallow, and he learns how to steer an elegant ship under sail. See the wind indicator there. We're trying to keep, we're trying to keep the wind on the port quarter. See the little arrow there, which is yeah. see the shape of the ship in the indicator. Yeah. So we're trying to keep the wind. We don't want the wind to go to the starboard side. It's most important. All you've got to do, you put on starboard. Yeah. Uh, I haul her down just the fore top us now. Right, make her up with that. Somebody go move forward, put your foot on the, on the rope. Bring it down close to the deck. My right, pawning, go put your foot on that rope. For, a little bit further forward in the pin. Keep the keep the clean clear. Go forward a bit, that's it. Right, Jeanette, make it up. Now, let her go. Let the bosun's voice is gentle with the lilt of the Irish in it. But there will be times when they're steel as well. And whether kindly or harsh. It's a voice above all others to be listened to and marked. Right now, sheet in the headsails. Right, make up the jib there where it is. Right, bring the foot top in a bit more. Bring the foot top in a bit more. Okay. Right, make her up with that. Stepping on course. Right, do the foot top miss first. Now, don't have two people pulling on the pin, she's just cutting it in half. One tail, everybody else in front. I'm getting on the pin. Is it more? Yeah. We open all these guns up. Yeah, no. Go out first. Go out first. Okay. Annie, are you ready? I'm in no hurry. Double up on that one. Stepping on top of the... Where's everybody disappeared? You're too close to that rigging. Back yourself off it. Straighten your elbows out. Get your ass out. Right, as soon as you let go of the red one and pull it out of the rig, start moving in. Hold that sail up off your feet. Let go of the red gas and start walking your way in. What is that long walking pimple doing? Put your hand in front of that sail, hold it up. Put your hand in front of the sail as you're moving and hold the sail up. Well, the boatswain is he's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, he's also a bit of a psychologist or a social worker, in that um, any of the kids that have got problems, he's the one that's going to deal directly with them. Right? Yeah. Hi. All together now, just drop out your squares. Start moving in towards the mast and down. And he's also the, the link between the master and mate and the trainees. He's the one that kind of steps right in, in, a, in a kind of a no man's land. When you're shouting and all the screaming and roaring that goes on decks, thing, you're literally watching people, seeing how they react. And uh, in their reaction, you're learning how to deal with them. Normally, for the first three, uh, two, three days of a cruise, you're laying down pretty hard on them. Uh, you're working them hard. Purely so when it comes to bad weather, they're knowing what they know what to do. Uh, at night time especially, they know where their pins are. The sail training, uh, basically, is, it's got nothing to do with actually sailing. It's purely to get the kid to come out of himself. And if you can get him literally just to walk down a deck, see a rope lying on the deck, uh, to pick it up and coil it, he's benefiting. Lay back in it. You pull that brace back, you think? The worst part uh, for me is actually the crew paying off, the crew leaving. In that I've just got to know 20 people, I've just made friends with them. 
uh, and after their, their fortnight on board, uh, they leave. Take a step forward. Come, come forward with the ropes, you can check the knot. Are you ready to come up? Come up! Right. Butlins, Clolins, back loosely on the pins. Are you ready on the Butlins, Clolins? Ease away, Butlins, Clolins, haul in the sheets. Right, he's haul that sheet, Jeanette. Come on, let's haul that sheet. Right, now you get the two tacks tight for it. They'll make up the sheets. The ropes and the rigging are a maze, and the words that define them equally unfamiliar. But the young people aboard Asgard walk in their youth in the footsteps of tradition. It's with them always, and they find it not at all oppressive. One of them wrote, after one of Asgard's stormy voyages, I honestly believe that not a single person on board wouldn't have made the passage again. They take these young people lookout watches on the bow as Asgard ploughs through kinder seas. And they do all the things that were done and had to be done when brigantines like the Asgard were the flagships of trade and commerce. And there is among them a sense of privilege that they've won the right to dip into the past. Sail training cruises aboard the Asgard, though, are not all work. No more were they when ships like this sailed for real, trading over the seas of the world. For whatever else they were, and they were many things, these glorious sailing ships were the homes of closely knit communities. And as in all communities, fun lessens tension. As the Asgard returns from her latest voyage, the Galway hookers are there to greet her, racing at Kilkerran. Two classes of sailing boats, the same as they ever were, but their roles upon the sea much changed. But what has not changed is the elemental reason for the continuance of them both. They're two of a kind, the Asgard and the Galway hookers, bound by those who sail them. They share a love and yearning for the unchanging sea.
Well, next Sunday we get under sail in the evening at 8.45 with a visit to a glorious pageant of sail held in the Baltic port of Flensburg, which attracts traditional sailing vessels from all over Northern Europe. Now on to Michael Oliver introduces our Rachmaninoff masterclass. <laughs> 